Hello and welcome. You're listening to the Tasty Tidbits Podcast. Get ready to receive rich, well-seasoned, and tasteful tidbits to transform your life. Each week, Dr. Tiffany comes to you with inspirational encouragement and thought-provoking interviews to help you revolutionize your walk with God. Are you hungry for more of His presence? Then get ready. And now, your host, pastor, author, and motivational speaker, Dr. Tiffany Watkins. Hello, everyone, and welcome again to Tasty Tidbits. I am your host, Dr. Tiffany Watkins, and I am excited to have you again today for another exciting episode. And I'm also excited uh, to have a special guest with us today, Nathan Hartness. And I'm very excited. We were kind of chit-chatting a little bit before, and so now I'm really, really excited uh, to get to know a little bit more about him and for you as listeners to be able to practice the presence of God and be able to Uh, bring God practically, bring Jesus Christ in your life practically so that you can know him personally. And with that being said, I want to let you know a little bit about Nathan. Nathan is the director of the International Ministries at a Worldwide Discipleship Association, where he oversees the development of discipleship movements in 32 countries. He has a particular call into Africa, where he has partnered with Bible schools, denominations, and ministries to train disciple makers in the approach Jesus used to train the 12. And we were talking about this before, and guys, this is really cool what he has going on. And he's also a life coach, a blogger, a podcaster, musician, adventurer, and a coffee roaster. (laughs) He received a copy of the Practice of the Presence of God when he was 16, and has been looking for new ways to help people experience God's living in an interactive presence in their moment to moment lives in every every sense of the way. And so thank you for being a part of the podcast today, Nathan. How are you? Tiffany, I'm doing really good. It's really good <laughs> to be here and, and uh, thank you for the kind introduction. Uh, You're more than welcome. It's a good day. You know? <laughs> a good well, day. You and know- Jesus, Jesus is already here. I can yes. I can I like to say that every uh, every every moment is a good moment to experience the living presence of Jesus. So, I was feeling him just in the introduction, and um, glad to glad to welcome him to the podcast too. <laughs> yes, yes, we are so glad to have him with us. You know, uh, just tell the listeners a little bit more about yourself. Something that I didn't mention. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I'm I'm all those things. Um, I think most importantly, though, um, I'm a loved person. Mm-hmm. Uh, above and beyond all those things. Uh, a big part of my story is, is that about six years ago, I went through um, an inner healing experience in which I, I saw Jesus in my mind's eye very, very vividly. And he took me to a memory of, a, of, a, of an experience that anchored a lot of shame for me in my past. And mm-hmm. he put his hand um, right through my rib cage, right on my on my heart in a way that I could just feel his hand just tenderly resting on my heart. And he said, I want you to know that whatever anybody else is saying around you, you are lovable because I love you and you are worthy of love because I made you. Mm -hmm. And, um, and that settled for me, the question of, am I, am am I loved or not? Um, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Once and for all. And I think that was really the main thing that was standing in the way of me being able to feel Jesus. Cause if I know that he loves me, then why wouldn't he want to be with me? So, so Mm -hmm. I, I I like to say, you know, I'm, I'm a, I'm a writer, I'm a speaker, I'm a podcaster, I'm a coffee roaster. Uh, I love doing all those things, but most of all, uh, I'm a a loved and lovable person uh, by Jesus. Amen. And listeners, and you're a love and lovable person um, by Jesus Christ as well. You know, that's interesting that you were saying that because we're in a Bible study. We just started our Bible study series. And for the whole year, we're getting more in the word of God and in the Bible. And so we're trying to memorize more of the scripture. And actually we're in Psalms 139, where it talks about, oh Lord, thou hast searched me and known me and how he knows our down sitting and our uprising and Mm -hmm. understand this. And just knowing the love that God has for us, it mm-hmm. it causes us to understand that when we are hard on ourselves, God is not as hard as 
uh, on us as we are on ourselves. And when we realize his love for us, then we would not be so hard on ourselves. You understand what I'm saying, Nathan? I mean, that whole, that whole idea of there's no, like, judge not lest you be judged. Mm -hmm. and, and where's that judgment coming from? When we judge others, you know, really that judgment is a mirror that we're holding up in front of our own faces and casting judgment on ourselves for what we judge others for. But really in Christ, there's no condemnation. For those mm -hmm. who are in Christ Jesus, no condemnation. And one of the things that I've learned just watching Jesus, how he, how he talks, how he walks, how he looks, how he has the, his facial expressions, man, that guy is really, really nice. Like he is mm -hmm. so much kinder and better than we ever could imagine or give him credit for. Um, and, and really the, the vast majority of judgment, you know, in our own life just comes internally from our own, you know, our own internal judgment, but Jesus, mm -hmm. Jesus doesn't judge us like we judge ourselves. Um, he, he is accepting and kind and, and firm and uh, truthful and honest and sometimes intense, but always loving. Yes, yes. And I, I believe that wholeheartedly, which makes me excited about what we're going to talk about today. Um, we're going to talk about spirit led discipleship, your book titled the title spirit led discipleship and intimacy and identity and training of the 12. So tell me a little bit about that and the listeners. Yeah, I mean, I got the the title for the book before I got any of the content of the book uh, back in 2013. It just, I was in prayer and the Lord just kind of he was there in the living room and I was actually in Ethiopia where I'll be uh, next week. Um, and I was just praying and I said, Lord, what do you want to do? And he said, I want you to write this book called spirit led discipleship. And I said, I don't, I don't even know what you're talking about. Um, but over the next, I guess, eight years, the Lord took me on a journey where I started to experience him tangibly more and more. And I went through like a major burnout in ministry um, and then I went through a season of counseling and healing mm -hmm. um, and, and coming back, um, the Lord really impressed on me that uh, discipleship is amazing. Like the mm -hmm. ways that we disciple each other, um, you know, according to Ephesians 4, each part doing its work as we build up one another in love, like that's amazing. And Jesus had a strategic plan for building disciples. Like he was a he was a very good rabbi, mm -hmm. but Jesus wasn't just a master disciple builder. He was an example of what a spirit led disciple builder looks like. And so Jesus is, I like to say Jesus's two-step uh, discipleship model was watch the father and do what he does. Listen mm -hmm. to the father and do what he says or say what he says. And so I always tell people, I, you know, we do a three or four day training on what is discipleship. But I always tell people wherever I'm teaching, if you forget everything else I say, um, Jesus's simple method is listen to the father, say what he says, watch the father, do what he does. And so what I saw is reliance on the Holy Spirit was really what Jesus was modeling, more than building a strategy or a curriculum, all that mm -hmm. stuff is important mm -hmm. and, and can be amazing and full of the spirit. But at the heart, it wasn't about a program for Jesus. It was about relationships mm -hmm. and it was about listening to the father. So I like to say that when Jesus looked for leaders, he, he wanted to um, hear the father's voice about them. He wanted to help them understand their identity in the mm -hmm. kingdom as kingdom mm -hmm. citizens and kingdom mm -hmm. leaders. He wanted to relate deeply with them and build attuning connections with them. And he wanted to empower them for supernatural kingdom ministry. And mm -hmm. that's what we see him doing after he appoints the 12. Um, he is actually modeling all the things he's going to send them out in Matthew 10 to do. You know, go out, preach the kingdom of heaven has come near, heal the sick, raise the dead, mm -hmm. cleanse the lepers, cast out the demons. Um, freely you've received, freely give. Mm -hmm. And when you come under opposition, stand up under that persecution. So those things Jesus modeled. And then he sent them out to do that. So that's kind of the skeleton of the book, um, Spirit Led Discipleship. But within that, really what I'm trying to get people to do um, anywhere they are in their discipleship, but especially as you step into that leadership um, part in your life, mm -hmm. is to deepen their reliance on the Holy Spirit, to mm -hmm. learn to listen to him, to understand who they are in him, 
and to walk in his power. And it's all about relationship. Jesus, Jesus loved relationship. He called the 12 so that they might be with him in Mark chapter three, first and foremost, just so that they might be with him because he loved hanging out with them and he loves hanging out with us. And as we do, as we connect with the vine, as we connect with his presence, then we're filled with his power to go out and cast out demons and do all that, you know, cool supernatural stuff, but it's mm-hmm. a relationship. Yes, I love it. I love it. I, that's one of my key words that I talk to the people all the time about is it is about relationship. It's not just about head knowledge, you know, but it's about that connection with him. And it was so ironic, Nathan, you know, um, when we had set up this interview, I actually had been um, asked to do a discipleship uh, class, which is going to come in a couple of weeks before this goes out. And I believe that that's what the Lord is getting us back to is, um, and I heard uh, my bishop say one time, it's not all about um, building members or in a church, it's about building disciples for the kingdom of God. And so I think, and I really know that this is a time and a season where uh, we're getting back to true discipleship, not just having members, not just having a church body in the four walls, but having having actual disciples that are able to go out and build the kingdom of God and represent who Jesus is in the earth today. And that is so important. And to represent uh, what we even see in Acts, um, where the disciples, what they did, they did the works that Jesus did, the miracle signs and wonders, but they could not do it until the Holy Spirit came upon them. And so we're coming back to a time where that is, it's always been necessary, but I believe the Lord is even magnifying it more today so that we can take part in it. So that's why I'm so excited to talk about um, your book today. And you mm-hmm. also talk a lot about learning to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit, which is so key. Uh, what has what impact has it made on your life and how you can practice hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit in a safe way? Yeah, I mean, the, the impact on my life is I, I wouldn't be where I am if it wasn't for the voice of the Holy Spirit. I would, um, when I was a little kid, I wanted to be a, a farmer or an astronaut. Um, but when I was 13, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, no, I want you to be a missionary in Africa. <laughs> and so having never been to Africa or met an African person, I dedicated my life to Africa. And mm-hmm. I, I went to Bible school and seminary with the heart and intent to go to Africa. And I did. And I now we work all over Africa. Um, I'm going to be in three countries in East Africa next week. I'll be in Amazing. Nairobi, um, Kenya in June. And we're seeing national movements of disciple makers. And most of it's not me. It's the people on the ground that we partner with that are cultivating these disciple making movements that are just growing. Mm. It's just God's time for discipleship. And yes, you know, like like we've had the crusades and the revivals and those Mm -hmm. are amazing. And there was a time for that. But now it's the time for for disciple making. One of my our, our Africa director, Benson Chembe, when I first met him in 2010, he said, anyone who would come to Africa for discipleship will be welcome here because that is our need and that's our cry. And so like it's, you know, I've oriented my life towards Africa, but also in the daily process of learning to hear the Holy Spirit, like it's not enough to just hear the Holy Spirit once. Like we mm-hmm. have a good father that wants to talk to us every day. Mm-hmm. And so um, and so sometimes we'll get a word for our lives and we'll try to surround it with things that make sense for us. Like, this is how I'm going to fulfill this word over my life. But I found the more I did that, the more the word didn't make sense. Mm-hmm. But when I surrendered that to the Lord and said, Lord, I think what you're calling me to is not just to be a missionary in Africa, but to trust you with the process and, and how to get there. Um, man, the Lord started leading me in, in different ways. And one of the things he he told me to do back in 2009 was to buy a plane ticket, um, leave all my credit cards at home, fly to Atlanta, Georgia with $10 and a change of clothes. And I came here to Atlanta for a weekend. I did not want to come to Atlanta, but the Holy <laughs> Spirit told me to. So I came and I met the president of this organization, Worldwide Discipleship Association. And Bob loved me and ministered to me. And uh, over the course of the next year, we, we became good friends. And I started mentoring and discipling other young guys back home because I thought, man, um, 
you know, discipleship, actually, it seems pretty simple. It's just, it's just meeting people where they are and helping them take one more step towards Jesus. So, man, if that's what discipleship is, I could probably do that with some people. So I started mm-hmm. meeting with a young guy back in seminary, and then I joined WDA staff, raised support for two years. I moved down here to Atlanta. Um, I, I became an international trainer and then I became the director for the international ministries in 2017. Mm. And everywhere I go, I expect this now. Um, everywhere I've gone, God has introduced me to somebody from another country who's invited me to go there. Mm. And so when I'm in Ethiopia, I fully expect to meet somebody from some other country who will invite me there and I'll go there next. And so the Lord just uses these breadcrumbs to take me places. I mean, one time, the reason that we work in Ethiopia is because I was coming back from the Congo on the airplane, sitting next to an Ethiopian pastor, and he started sharing the gospel with us. When he found out that we were discipleship trainers, he said, oh, no, you have to come to Ethiopia and train my leaders. And it turns out that this Ethiopian church started in the 70s, full gospel church. Mm -hmm. um, they had only allowed one other person from the U.S. to speak in their pulpits. Oh, wow. They're a very indigenous church, very suspicious of outsiders, but they allowed us to come and teach about discipleship. And this movement started in, in this church and then other churches in the area that's now impacted hundreds of thousands of people in Ethiopia. And it's all just because God set it up and we just listen. Mm-hmm. We do that's amazing. Well. So that's like, that's one of the reasons why I think it's important to start with the why before the how, Mm -hmm. like why listen to God, because you will have adventures like you couldn't believe. Mm -hmm. And the other why to listen to God is because God is the first, the best person to meet your needs. Mm -hmm. You know, like I, I have really good friends in my, in my life. I have an amazing wife. I have amazing children. I have amazing parents, but none of them can meet my needs the way that God can. And I went, I had a crisis um, in which I felt really lonely and I really needed a best friend in my life. And, and I didn't feel like my wife could do that. I didn't feel Mm -hmm. like my friends could do that. I needed like a best, best friend who could, who could really like be with me and be there for me every day. And my counselor told me that God was supposed to be that person. And I told her that made no sense to me. Because how are you supposed to, you know, my, I didn't know how to interact with God in a way mm-hmm. that I could get feedback, you know? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, but when I learned to like, listen to the Holy Spirit in a way that I could hear not just directions, but also like uh, emotional messaging, like, I love you. I'm proud of you. I'm with you. Let's do this together. Jesus really, really became my best friend. And it became a satisfying relationship that met my needs. So that's like, that's the why for me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the how the how is all about openness and surrender Mm -hmm. it's it's romans 12 in view of god's mercies i surrender my body as a living sacrifice it's my reasonable act of worship it's just saying hey jesus i'd love for you to be with me and i know that you love me and that you and that you want to be with me and so what what do you want to say to me today and then Mm -hmm. just writing down what i hear whether whether I'm 100% sure it's him or not, just writing down what I hear in, a, in that state of like warm relational expectation. Mm-hmm. You know, like when you're with somebody that you really, really care about and love, that you just know, if you just ask them a question, you know, they'll have something good to say. Like mm-hmm. that's what it's like with Jesus. I, I just, I ask him a question with confidence that he's going to have something good to say. And then I write down what I hear Um, And then I can test it against scripture. I can bring it to friends. Most of the time, it's just, hey, I'm with you. I love you. Don't be afraid. I'm for you. You know, no weapon forged against you will prosper. God will give me scriptures. God will give me insights. God will give me messages on billboards. Like God will speak to me in all kinds of ways. He'll he'll give me dreams. But, But it starts with that simple hey, I bet you got something good to say to me. I bet you want to be with me right now. You're so good. I'm, I'm open. Let's do Mm -hmm. it. And then, and then we find that God actually loves to talk to his kids. 
Yes, yes, he does. You know, um, I was thinking of the scripture that came to mind, acknowledge him in all of your ways and he will direct your path. So like when you wake up in the morning, when you immediately acknowledge him, it's not always, and I tell people all the time, prayer is not always talking to God and telling him this or that or talking to Jesus, I want this, that, and the other. Sometimes communicating with him is worshiping him, telling him how much you love him and listening to him. And he will speak, like you said, in the many ways that he speaks, you know, uh, he'll speak through your children you know or he'll speak through something that you may have heard a song or anything because he wants to speak to us he wants that relationship with us and he's not a hard taskmaster a lot of times like people make it but when we just have that heart towards him listeners as he was saying when you have that heart towards God and you love him and you you, you want to be with him you know he's a loving father he loves us even before we loved ourselves Jesus came to die for our sins and he loves us and so when we understand his love the more we just be in his presence the more we will just realize how much his love is for us you know sometimes we can't fathom it but his love is just everlasting it's so huge we can't even contain it and so Nathan I just love the joy that exudes from you when you talk about it because it's not just a head thing it's your it comes from inside it comes from within the spirit that is on the inside of you and that comes through just um, not being legalistic, you know, it's time out for legalism, <laughs> but it's time for the Holy Spirit just to come in and love on us. Yeah, I do want to say, Tiffany, because I know there's probably people listening that are going, that sounds great. You have no idea how hard it is for me to overcome my negative views of God or my belief that he's about to hit me or, you know, run away from me or get bored with me. Like, I understand and that's where healing comes in. You know, mm -hmm. all of us have obstacles that are in the way and all of us have a unique journey to healing. Oftentimes, if we had um, insecure attachments with, with our parents or with our attachment figures in our life, um, we it's very, very hard on a visceral light, right brain level to think of God as anything but a harsh taskmaster. Mm -hmm. And replacing false views of God with true ones, that is a journey. And that does mm -hmm. take the removal of obstacles. And one of my favorite things, ways to do that is by saying, Jesus, I know the truth that you're good, that you're loving and kind and careful. And so can you please help me identify one obstacle mm -hmm. uh, in my life and, and talk to me about it so that we can remove it together. And oftentimes it's something from the past. It's a memory Sometimes it's bad teaching. Mm -hmm. I, love, I love books like um, there's a book called Gentle and Lowly by Dane Ortland. Um, that's an amazing exposition on the personality of Jesus. And I recommend it to everybody. Um, Frank Laubach wrote a book called Letters from a Modern Day Mystic. And mm -hmm. he, he talked about uh, just the goodness of God as he practiced his presence over the course of a year living mm. in the Philippines as a missionary. There's so many good books and teachings um, that actually give you a true view of God as a good father. Um, there's good worship coming out now that just extols, mm -hmm. man, God, you're, you're a good, good father. And <laughs> it's so good. I mean, I, yes. I love that stuff. The intimacy, <laughs> the intimacy movement, you know, it's, it's like people are getting close to the Lord. And, and that is, that's part of the revelation that God's giving to this generation mm -hmm. is that close. He wants to be intimate with his people. Um, not just, not just to be revered and feared, although he, that, that is like the beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord, but like he wants to be close to his kids. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And as we, as we learn more about what he's actually like, that he's in a good mood, that he enjoys being with us. Um, we, we find it, it doesn't feel so scary to mm -hmm. open our hearts and listen. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. That's so good. And, you know, you talk about emotional healing um, in your discipleship and leadership development. Why do you include that emotional healing in there? I think because emotional issues are one of the, one of the greatest obstacles to our discipleship journey. Mm -hmm. We found that as a ministry at WDA that people going through a discipleship curriculum will grow and grow and grow and then they stop. And they plateau. Mm -hmm. and often it happens um, in their 30s, 40s, and 50s. But we went back and we looked at why is it that people aren't growing? And what we found as a ministry is people stop growing 
because they have emotional issues from the past that were never fully dealt with. And so we actually wrote a, a curriculum called Restoring Your Heart that's designed to, um, to look at family of, origin issue, uh, family of origin issues, grief, forgiveness, healing, um, what the healing process looks like. Um, and, and people get in these little communities and they talk about real, real things. And we find that they start growing and healing and releasing old pain and old baggage. And then they start growing again. And I think Jesus understood that. So much of what he said addressed the emotional core of people's lives, mm -hmm. not just the spiritual information that they believed or didn't believe. I mean, look at Jesus with Peter. You know, you have little, like, why did you doubt? Like, why, why are you afraid? Like, you know, you're a rock. I'm going to build my church. Like all the things that he's talking with Peter about are things that are addressing deep emotional issues and wounds. And so I think Jesus does that with us. The Holy Spirit is called the counselor. Mm -hmm. so he's a good counselor. <laughs> you know, I've never met a better counselor than the Holy yes. Spirit. And, uh, and he's free. <laughs> He doesn't take <laughs> you don't insurance. have to pay, right. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't take insurance and he doesn't take appointments, but he's free. And you can get them anytime. <laughs> That's so true. That is so true. So, you know, Nathan, how should listeners, listeners understand the importance of progressive discipleship approach versus just following the Holy Spirit? Yeah. So I, I do, I, I'm big on following the Holy Spirit, but I think there's an understanding and a wisdom that we can gain from studying Jesus's approach. And the wisdom that we gain is that much like babies grow to become mature adults, um, spiritual babies grow to become mature adults. And they do mm -hmm. that progressively in phases. And so I don't ask, I don't ask a nine month old baby to go to the grocery store and get a gallon of milk. You know, <laughs> right, right. I, I don't. I don't ask a, a four-year-old to get a job and pull his weight in this house. You know that that would be considered abusive. And so, like different stages and different phases have different maturity markers, different content, different relational uh, stuff that we're doing, a different context for the relationship that we have with them. And so, in a very similar way, Jesus is taking brand new baby believers that are just on spiritual milk and he's getting them to the place where they can eat solid food or think about it like he's taking a baby to a toddler to a, a young adult and an adult and when you get to be an adult you start wanting to have kids of your own mm -hmm. and you get a little older a little more mature you become a grandparent and then you start wanting your kids to have kids and mm -hmm. you start wanting to like have a different kind of relationship and shepherd a community and think about your inheritance and what you're going to leave as a legacy to the generations that have come up under you. The same thing happens spiritually when we go through this five phase developmental approach. Um, sometimes we don't know that we're doing it, but, but the Holy Spirit is just checking off the boxes of the lessons that we need to learn and the things we need to grow in before we're ready to reproduce ourselves spiritually. And then we're ready to have generations come up under us. So we call it our five phase approach. We have um, esta establishing faith. Um, sorry, we have uh, um, uh, laying foundations, establishing faith, um, uh, preparing people for ministry, developing new leaders and developing mature leaders. And we use the stuff that Jesus taught the 12 in those different phases mm -hmm. to write our curriculum. So we have 42 uh, books and Bible studies that are phase based. And we'll take people wherever they are in the phases and we'll say, here's what we think you need to do next. And they'll, they'll be able to start plugging those holes, the discipleship they never got. Um, and so it's, it's a, it's a great set of materials and it involves the emotional component as well. Um, but really it's the Holy spirit that brings the growth, you know? Yes. Yes. Um, yes. So, so that's, I think the wisdom of understanding that growth is progressive mm -hmm. and it's done in community with each other and with the Holy spirit. And we, when we have the wisdom to know how people grow, then we're not forcing them through a program. Just like I'm not forcing, <laughs> right. a toddler, you know, to go get a job. We're just saying when it happens, we say, hallelujah, Jesus. You've done it again. <laughs> and we're able to offer wisdom to our disciples to say, Hey, I think you're missing a, a component of your maturity. Maybe focus on, you know, learning to share your testimony or, focus on studying the word or focus on building healthy relationships. 
and we can mm-hmm. help people grow progressively, but it really is Jesus that does the work. Right. And, it, you know, it comes to mind is um, iron sharpeneth iron. So we're all helping one another. I love that um, what you said about community, because I think that's very important, especially when you have a community of people um, on the same goal, working towards the same goal. It gives you kind of that um, belief that I can do this. Other people are with me. They're working with me. And I want to make sure that I'm working on that journey. So it is it is great to have that type of curriculum and have what you are doing. And I know listeners that it would be very beneficial. And Nathan's going to tell you a little bit more of how you can get in touch with him. But before we do that, Nathan, I want to ask if you would just pray for the listeners that um, they would even experience Jesus more um, and maybe come in contact with him in different ways that they never experienced. And even just to pray for them that um, they may experience the Holy Spirit even more in their own lives, just like Jesus touched you personally. Would you pray for those listeners? Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah. So, so what I want to do is because when I started experiencing Jesus tangibly in a way that felt real to me that I was experiencing the real Jesus, and it looks different for different people. For me, it feels like just warmth going all over my body and, mm-hmm. and just his, his loving voice speaking scriptures and words of revelation to me, like, but whatever it looks like for you, you know, I have a passion to see people practice God's presence every day. Mm -hmm. Uh, And I haven't missed a day in six years of tangibly feeling God's presence at some point. And I believe that the Lord um, has given me the ability. It's not magic. um, But I just say this to raise people's faith, the ability to pray for an impartation of faith Mm -hmm. that people can turn to Jesus and experience that validation of his presence, just being there with him, assuring them, yeah, I'm right here. I got Mm -hmm. you. I'm holding you. And so what I want to do as we begin praying is I want, I want you to imagine that in your mind, um, there's a, like a, like a pipe or a, or a straw or something that's, that's like oriented up and down. And it's sort of like, um, it's sort of like uh, wavy and twisted at different points. And I just want you to imagine that pipe becoming perfectly straight and, and the light from heaven, just kind of going right into that, into the top of that pipe and going clear on right through to your heart. And, and imagine that that's God's presence with no obstacles, no hindrances, nothing in the way. And I know that might not feel Mm -hmm. true for you, but I want you to imagine that that by faith, that that you're opening your mind and heart, uh, that today is a good day to feel him. Today is a good day to experience him. He loves you right where you are. He doesn't need you to grow, be better, shape up your life in order for you to feel him. His presence is a gift, pure and simple. In fact, the only thing one of the only things that can really block that gift is the uh, the belief that it's not a gift, mm-hmm. the belief that you can earn it or work for it. And so, and so before I even pray, I align my heart relationally to the Lord. Yes. And so I say, Lord, I offer my body as a living sacrifice. Mm-hmm. I just open my mind like that conduit. I open mm-hmm. my heart to receive your light and your love. And I say, come. Holy Spirit, yes, Lord. we bless you, we praise you, we say your way is right, and we willingly align our heart and our minds to receive what you are so willingly and graciously pouring out. We welcome you in right now as a touch point for just one moment, one touch point of experiencing you of knowing you, we willingly slow down our racing thoughts and minds just to breathe you in and enjoy your beautiful, tangible, living, interactive presence with us. I ask for every one of my friends that you would turn the key to their hearts, open that door, um, and flood our hearts with light. In a way that we know that whenever anyone turns to the Lord, the veil is removed and we see you rightly. I thank you, Lord, that we will know you fully just as we are fully known. And yet now we have the beautiful down payment of your Holy Spirit, letting us taste heaven through the knowledge of you. So I pray that heaven would invade 
our hearts, that our minds would tune into you, and that every day you'd remind us to connect with you um, in a space of joy and deliberate appreciation. We love you, Lord. Yes. Thank you for loving me. Thank yes. you for loving me. And I said, you do love me so well. Yes. Satisfied in you. You are the joy of our hearts. And I just bless each person within the sound of my voice to receive a dawning faith, the inheritance of a dawning faith, like light coming up in the morning, um, to realize that you, Holy Spirit, are available to us. You live inside of us. Separation with you is an illusion. And so we just say yes to you, Holy Spirit. Have your way in us, whatever it looks like, whatever it takes. We bless you to completely possess and control us, to use us, to fill us, to encompass us and love us. Thank you, Lord. To your name be the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 You know, I just feel the presence of the Lord. It's just like even a, just a wave of his presence and listeners, um, even for that person that is suffering um, from depression and oppression, even as Nathan was praying, I just felt, felt the glory of the Lord come upon you and I saw fresh oil upon you. It was like God was pouring a new oil upon you to renew your strength and to renew your joy. And wow. the, what the enemy has been trying to attack you with because of the prayer that Nathan has prayed, I literally saw the healing presence of the Holy Spirit wow. come upon you. So take that healing presence right now. Anybody that is listening, I even feel that as he was praying, there was just a healing, not only emotional healing, but a physical and a spiritual healing that is taking place even while he prayed that prayer, you know, Nathan, you have a mighty healing ministry. I don't know if anybody ever revealed that to you, but God is getting ready to where you get ready to go and minister in Ethiopia and all of those other places. You're getting ready to see a turnaround to where the Holy Spirit is going to be with you to cause um, his presence to heal a lot of people. Jesus is going to be there in the midst. And, and even in India and all of the places that he's taking you, he said, get ready because his healing anointing, his healing presence is going to invade everywhere that he causes the soles of your foot to tread upon. And so when you were praying, I literally just felt the power and the anointing of God. And I feel him so powerful. Yes. <laughs> yes Lord. Well, so, yeah, he's, yes. he's called, he's called me a healer of nations. Yes. Um, yeah, I was on the floor at a little <laughs> church in Memphis and the Lord was speaking to me like never before. <laughs> and, uh, he, called, he called me a nation healer. And so the Lord, wow. the Lord is, um, has, has shown me, um, the, the capacity through his Holy spirit to give, uh, healing systems mm -hmm. to, to patients and people groups that uh, facilitate emotional, physical, uh, even political and relational healing. And mm -hmm. so I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see how that all plays out. But mm -hmm. you know, each one of I'm not special. It, like every one of us has That's an incredible right. destiny written on a scroll in heaven for us. Uh, everybody here, you know, is going to go on a can go on a journey of intimacy with the Lord where mm -hmm. the Lord. Is unrolling new scrolls and be like you thought the last one was cool check out <laughs> right. this one you know yes so that's you know that's that's what we get when we when we spend time in god's presence i like mm -hmm. saying you know let your love clock run you know turn on the love clock and, and let it run with jesus and you'll find magically on its own accord spiritual fruit will begin manifesting in your life in new mm -hmm. destinies that yes. are even better suited for you and even more perfect for your life will unfold and uh it'll be the ride of your life so uh i can tell you got that heart too you're like um tiffany you're like a spotlight mm -hmm. um and i saw your face just being like a spotlight and wherever your face turned you're able to to uh cast light on people yes. and and important things and things that the lord shows you turn over here and look Look over here and where you yes. look, you bring illumination and, and, and a spotlight Thank where people you. can see um, the revelation that's on an idea or on a person's life. That's mm -hmm. a real anointing on your life. And I just want to I just want to bless that too. I receive that. Um, yes. Yeah. Confirmation. Yeah. I've had that word before. Um, and that's all I pray the Lord let somebody see your light, not me, but his light. And that's 
That's amazing. So listeners, I'm telling you, 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 you receive that healing. You receive the love of God that's even on uh, this podcast today because the Holy Spirit has truly showed up. I do a lot of uh, podcasts, but really I feel like the Holy Spirit is really visiting you today. And whatever you have need of, his healing anointing and his healing virtue is with you right now. So we bless you in Jesus name and we decree and declare that the glory and the presence of God as he continues to reside with you, that you will begin to see him in a new way that you've never seen him before in Jesus name. Amen. 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 And Nathan, tell us how we can get more in touch with you. Yeah. Um, so uh, NathanHarkness.com is my website. Um, you can reach out to me on Facebook, uh, Nathan Harkness author, um, spirit led discipleship. You can just search it on Amazon. You can get a get a copy on Kindle or physical book. But reach out to me on Facebook if, um, especially if you've been touched or had an experience with the Lord. Those are my favorite stories to hear. Is just like you know, wow, Jesus is showing me this this stuff, and I'll I'll interact with you. I'll write you back. Um, yeah. I love hearing how people are experiencing His presence. Yes, and we'll also have Nathan's information um, in the podcast notes, and we'll have that for you so that you'll be able to click and connect right with him. And I have to get your book as well. I'm going to get that, a lot of your information, because I believe it is really helpful, and just share it with other leaders that I know as well, because I know that we are all called to be disciples, Nathan, so that's what we desire to do. So thank you so much. Uh, for being a part of the podcast today and may the Lord continue to bless all the works of your hands and listeners until next time God bless bye-bye thank you for listening to tasty tidbits with Dr. Tiffany Watkins if you're enjoying the show feel free to subscribe rate and share with your friends To learn more about Dr. Tiffany, check out her blog on goodreads.com or visit her website at www.renewedfaithministriesinc.com. Until next time, stay blessed.